there. I'm Chris Alvey and I'm going to be talking to you today about campaigns of Oz and particularly how combat resolution works in campaigns of Oz. We've got uh, we, we, we've got our our game uh, map set up set up here, and now obviously if you're playing a board game, you wouldn't have uh, miniatures set up, but we'll come back to why we've got them there in a no, sort of in a moment. So the situation that we've got set up is that the Wicked Witch of the North has sent her forces under the command of General Fotham. They're at Long Walk. And they're going to invade Pump, Pumpkin Land of Harvest at Muddy Ford and engage the Land of Harvest forces that are, that, that are there. So in Campaigns of Oz, you've got three different types of combat res no, sort of resolution that you can use. So there is a simple sort of um, a, a simple board game mechanism where you just count out how many how many units you've got in your stack. So the Winkies have six, the Land of Harvest have six, and then you multiply them by a dice roll. So let's see how, how that would work. So we we'll roll our D10, and the, um, the Winkies have got two. So two times six, which is the number of units in their stack, is 1.2. They haven't got a spellcaster with them, so they round down. So the Land of Harvest would lose one random um, unit from their stack. But combat is simultaneous. So um, at the start of combat, they had six um, in their stack as well. So we'll roll a D10 for them and they get a four. So six times 0 0.4 is 2.4. So the, um, the attacking uh, Winkies would randomly lose two units from their stack. And then at that point, they would have the opportunity to either uh, fall back or continue and fight again. If you want a game that's sort of based on um, the big strategic picture of their big map movements and recruiting and resources and that sort of thing, then um, that might be the combat mechanism that you choose. But uh, one of the sort of key features of Campaigns of Oz is that we have a de detailed um, battle board combat um, resolution, and that's going to be the main focus of this video. I've moved the stack of counters from the strategic map onto the battle board um, and set them up, deployed, ready for the battle. So let's see how it all works. The battle board starts with each side unit in their starting row. So neither side have used flank deployment for simplicity in this example. The first step in each turn is to assign move order counters. Both will advance since there isn't much point in standing or retreating at this stage. The third step is for the attacker to move a hero led group followed by an opportunity for both players to declare combat. Since neither side is in range of the other, combat doesn't occur. Then the defender moves their hero-led group, followed by another opportunity for both players to declare combat. Since all units have had an opportunity to move, Players jump to the fifth and final step. Both players announce whether they're retreating. The pumpkin heads will not retreat in this scenario and the player decides to stay. This ends the first turn of the battle board scenario. The second turn starts with new movement orders. General Frotham has decided to split his force, leaving the longer ranged artillery behind. The pumpkin heads will advance We need to get into melee. After the attacker movement, the two sides are still out of range from each other.
where combat does not occur. The pumpkin head group advances. For combat, this will mean that they're in range of the artillery, which has, which has a range of two areas, and the Jaegers, which have a range of one area. But they're not able to melee because they need to be in the same area. The two Jaegers roll their dice. Get in a nine and a one. Those hits because if we have a look at the at the um, range counter, they need an eight or less to hit. The roll the roll of one allows the attacker to choose a target unit, and we choose one of the greater pumpkin heads, and that is removed from the battle. All groups with heroes have acted. So the artillery, which is the only single unit, acts. It doesn't move, but it does attack. And it rolls its dice and gets a two. So this hits because they need a six or less. Um, we decide to remove a lesser pumpkin unit. Neither side will retreat, so the second turn ends. Turn three starts with the allocation of orders. The pumpkin heads must advance to get into melee. The player decides that all of his units will stand. Since all attacking units are staying in their location, no attacker movement occurs. And combat is conducted. So the two Jaegers who have the ranged attack um, roll their, their, combat, their combat dice. And they roll a, a two. And they roll a four. killing both pumpkin head units. Note that the artillery can't fire yet because single acts, single units act after all hero led groups. As King Jack only has one unit left for the sake of this example, um, he decides to, uh, no, to, no, to retreat and that ends the battle. So, that's, um, so that's an example of looking at how the battle board and how the different units with different ranges, different combat abilities sort of work. So um, the last thing to say is that if, as well as a board gamer, you're a miniatures gamer, then um, each one of these each one of these counters corresponds exactly with the unit in the miniatures game. So this is a unit of lesser pumpkin. And you see here we have a unit of lesser pumpkin heads. So you can imagine that we could deploy those on a war games table um, with terrain. We could fight the battle and then we could put the results back into the game. So this is a unit of greater pumpkin head. And that's, uh, that's this. Uh, uh, this uh, BS of giant, uh, -like giant pumpkins. And our leader, so King Jack, the sort of king of the harvest land. So this is, uh, no, this is uh, the, the model for, for him. So over on the Winkies side, so in this battle, the Winkies had some light artillery. So this is the, this is the model for the, link, the Winky light artillery. It's, um, it was led by General Fotham. So we have um, General Fotham, this is his counter. This is a miniature that represents him. And then the figures in the, uh, in the army were made up of Jaegers, which are the musket armed Winky infantry. So we have two units that have been represented by this type of figure. And we had um, Winky spear armed infantry. 
uh, that uh, are example there. So there's a great correlation um, between the board game. You can play it fast mode in the details of combat resolution on the battle board, or you can transfer all of the action um, from the board game onto your war games table, and each unit has models that exactly sort of represent that. So I hope you found that interesting.